and panel a bench in the Chief Justice. So we want to urge this court to perhaps in, uh, interpret for us whether the Deputy Chief Justice can empanel a bench. Number two, Your Lordship, is when did, where did the Chief Justice get the authority to empanel the, the bench? <coughs> Was the Chief Justice present? Why did the Chief Justice execute her functions and her mandate under Article uh, 165, Clause 4? What was the necessity of the delegation of this function? Those are pertinent issues, Your Lordship, that requires clarification before we go to the roots of the matter, the cuts of the matter. It's our submission, Your Lordship, that the Chief Justice, who is exercising delegated powers, cannot further delegate the Deputy Chief Justice. That's why the confusion is in white and black that the obligations and the duty belongs to the Chief Justice. Finally, Your Lordship, the reason why we find ourselves in this situation is because of what the court is struggling to explain to us. That three fires have graciously generated expediency, and other fires that were consolidated, that six file with the lead file two, uh, 522, have no reasons why they should be before you. Noting that your lordship, those matters were equally satisfied as urgent and raising heavy constitutional matters. When I looked at your orders, your lordship, that you issued to someone as today, you repeated the same, that they raise weighty constitutional matters. Why are we being discriminated by the court that our files are not considered as a priority? And the, pri the files with orders are the only ones that the court is sitting on a Saturday? The Chief Justice is empaneling, the, the Deputy Chief Justice is empaneling the bench. We are called, like uh, in a lightning speak, to appear before you. Is it not because there are some orders that the state wants to vacate? You cannot run away from that reality, your lordship, most respectfully. My lord, with your correct permission, for the record, uh, Dr. Kamolo, for the court respondent, he is in the team. I believe the reason we are here and the reason why we do forum is because we recognize that there are different parties in these proceedings. So it would be abominable for a section of the parties to seek to colonize these proceedings and treat them as if they are the only ones entitled to the audience of the court. So in this regard, my proposal is as follows that each of the parties who has, whose representation has been taken, gets an opportunity to indicate to the court what applications they have before the court, so that we're able to proceed methodically. And each party then, the court can then give directions on how we move to treat each of those applications. Otherwise, we may be here indefinitely if each of the parties takes the opportunity accorded to make lamentations, to make speeches, and to move. So we respectively urge that we get an opportunity for each of the parties to ventilate the issues because the federal respondent has a pending application which is due to file, a preliminary objection which even contests the jurisdiction of the High Court to hear the matters because it is a matter related to the nomination of a presidential and governmental president, which in our view lies squarely within the domain of the Supreme Court. So we once accorded an opportunity procedurally, we shall then treat all those issues and hopefully the matters being raised or to be raised about recusal and so on, they will fall by the wayside. Thank you, my Lord. Interest for the first interested party. Mr. 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 Mr.
my application for which I need to do. We are now just having an application in response. Well, what is it that you want? Lord Chief, permit me to make an application under the Mutunga rules that following the disclosure of the court this morning that was made by Justice Murima that this honorable court does determine whether the Deputy Chief Justice has the power to empanel the bench under Article 165, Clause 4. Your Lordship, and whether, if she has any power of that nature, the same ought to be communicated to the members of the Republic by the Chief Justice, that that is to say, Your Lordship, that the Chief Justice has delegated her powers under Article 165, Clause 4, to empanel this bench. Your Lordship, this is the background of my application. That on the 14th of October, 2024, the Honorable Chief Justice did speak and panel this bench to hear and adjudicate over six matters which were consolidated in the lead file being 522. And the files that were consolidated in the Lord Sheet, my lady, were two, 522, 509, 537, 528, 525, and 506. In Lord Sheet, it is our humble submissions that this bench was exclusively and panel to handle those files. And that the communication was effectively made to the parties by the Honorable Chief Justice. I have given the background of my application. And that we are aware that subsequently other files, and the most important one is E. 014 of 2024, which came from Peruguaya, was equally submitted for empanelment before the Chief Justice. To date, Your Lordship, there is no communication from the Office of the Chief Justice other than this morning that this file was equally empaneled and submitted for hearing by this bench. Your Lordship, the other, uh, the other ground is this, Your Lordship, that when we appeared before you on the 16th of October, Your Lordship, we sought your indulgence, Your Lordship, to have a further mention on the 18th of October. Lord, I'm sorry we are constrained with the judge to uh, seek your guidance. My name is Ndomi, appearing for Professor Kuliki. Listening to my colleagues, he is making an application before the event, complaining about wrong supposedly made by the Chief Justice and the Deputy Chief Justice in bringing us to this session of the day. For me, the clarification I wish the court provided whether an application of that nature can be made informally without the CJ and the DCJ being made parties to that application and being offered an opportunity to explain so that uh, to be fair on uh, these state officers, it's easy to speak to the gallery and cast all manner of insinuations and aspersions against them. And if my Lord finds that an application of that nature cannot be made informally without actually filing a formal application and joining the CJ and the DCJ so that they have a chance to respond to these insinuations, I suggest again and I beg the court, I'm a very junior counsel, but Professor Mugay wonders that we run the risk of coming to a court of law to speak to the gallery in 
in parliamentary language what I fear is happening is what is called filibustering methods. So filibuster is where you go to a forum intended to deal with the business of the day and you keep making speeches upon speeches that have no bearing on the business of the day where the motive is to ensure that the business of the day is not conducted. To the best of my knowledge, the business of the day were there were applications on their side, there were applications on our side, and the court was graceful enough to give both sides an opportunity to come today to ventilate those applications. Instead, we've lost two hours, my lord. We have not been addressed on those applications. We are just filibustering.